Hey, what would you pray for? If you knew it was your very last prayer, if you knew you were never going to have another prayer, it's the end of your life. You'd probably pray for the people that you love. You might pray for a little more time. We get an incredible glimpse of Jesus' last prayer. You know, throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus, he would go off and he would pray. He would pray for different things, but we never know the exact things that Jesus prayed. But in John 17, we get a glimpse of the heart of Jesus' last prayer. We actually get the words that he prayed and we can feel what he was feeling. In verses 1 through 5, Jesus prays for himself. After that, in verses 6 through 19, Jesus prays for his disciples. He prays for those 11 guys that had journeyed with him for the last three years, that he'd done life, that he'd done ministry with, and that he loved so much. And then in verses 20 through 26, Jesus prays for us. He prays for the followers who are yet to come. Throughout that prayer, Jesus prayed for one thing specifically. He prayed that we would have unity. And through that unity that he prayed for, that the world would see that God sent his son. For us, when we look at these scriptures, when we know what Jesus' last prayer was, a lot of times we think we have to build unity, that we have to grow it, that it's something that we do. It's not something that we do. It's something that's given. It's something that's provided. It's something that we share in. As brothers and sisters of Christ, we have one spirit. That's what unifies us. Now in a world full of dysfunction, in a world full of chaos, in a full, world full of rifts, in a crazy world that we live in, the world needs to see a unified body of Christ. And through this, the world will know who Jesus is. The problem is when we don't act unified, when we do our own thing and we have rifts with inside the church, it causes disunity, it causes dysfunction, and it causes a lost world to not see Jesus very well in the light that he wants the world to see him. So how do we build that unity? You know, we live in the United States of America, and the United States of America is probably should be called the ununited States of America. After this last year in the political season, there was more divide in our country than ever before. We were divided on racial issues, political issues, COVID issues, whether or not to get vaccinated or not. We were even divided on whether our kids should go to school or not. Never in the history of time have we ever been divided or undecided on whether or not our kids should go to school. And with so many different opinions, it is very hard for us to stay united. But if believers aren't united, then the world doesn't see Christ. And what it does see is dysfunction in the church. And when there's dysfunction in the church and we go to work on Monday and we talk about things that are bothering us with other believers or what they think or what they say, we are fractioned too. And that is when Satan does his greatest work. He does his work on the outside of the church, causing people not to want to come in because of what they see from believers that are prayed for to be unified. In your groups, you're gonna have an incredible opportunity to bond. You know, one of the things that's great is that we're not told to build unity. Unity is something that's given to us in the spirit of Christ. We don't have to, we don't have to build it, we just have to preserve it. How do we preserve it? We preserve it by loving each other, by caring for each other, and looking out for each other's concerns. When we do this, the world sees Jesus at his greatest. You know, we probably all have looked around and seen a group of people, a group of friends that have a relationship like this, that, wow, we looked at it and we said, that is something that I want. I wanna have friendships like that. I wanna have people in my life that actually care and are concerned for me. Well, in John 17, listen to what Jesus says. Jesus prayed in John 17, I pray that they, and that they is us, as you are in me and I am in you, I pray that they can be one in us. Then the world will believe that you sent me. Nowhere are we told to build unity. We are called to be one flock under one shepherd. 
That's what Jesus' prayer for us was. He knew that if we showed love by the way that we're united in spirit, that the world would see him. And the world would know that God sent him, his one and only son. So, I think of it kind of like this. And I want to show you an illustration today that we're going to just look at something that I feel is like a united front that believers should be like. In this box of crayons, you see that there's many different colors. This is a box of 64 crayons. In a full box, there's 120 crayons. And every crayon is different in shape. And each crayon has a specific purpose. As you can see in every box that you pull out, there's different uses for different crayons. Some of them have been worn a lot. Some of them even, some of the, some of the coloring and some of the papers torn. You know, in groups of believers, we have people of different color. We have people of different sizes. We have people of different, that have different styles, that have difference in thoughts, and we difference in opinions sometimes. But when all the believers don't act as one, and this believer decides that he's just gonna leave the box, it makes a hole in the colors. And we don't get to see the full aspects of God and what he wants from his church. Now, when my kids were little and we go out to a restaurant, they would always eat off the kitty menu. And on the kitty menu, it always come with a picture and that you could color in the picture. But they would only give you like two crayons. And it was impossible to color a good picture with only two crayons. I mean, the sun can't be green and the grass can't be purple. And so you would take those two colors and it would be frustrating to try to do the artwork that you are trying to accomplish. Now in the church, when all of the colors work together, it creates a beautiful picture the picture that Jesus was praying for, the world would see. And when the world sees a church that's united, that has one heart and one spirit that all work together, that unification of people is different and the world needs to see it. The early church grew so quickly. And why did it grow quickly? Because the band of believers that loved Jesus spread the gospel by showing love inside their groups to one another. They had compassion for each other. They all looked out for each other's needs. And that became contagious. And the world needed that more than anything else. In a world that's so divided now, our world needs to see brothers and sisters in Christ that are unified in spirit and in love for one another. We have the opportunity in the church, a group of believers that are gathered together in one spirit and one heart to love each other so well that it would spread. Now, if we don't do that well, the church doesn't get to see a good example of Christ. In a small group like you're in, as we get started this new year, it would be great to see you come together to look out for each other's concerns to grow in love and compassion for one another. When that happens, the world will know who Jesus is, and that will be contagious. Have a great week.